Hello everybody, I hope you're doing well wherever you are. So 7.3 is about lines of best fit and prediction. And so we've talked about this a little bit in the past, so we're going to get a little more in the weeds here. So we're going to become familiar with the idea of best fit lines uh, for correlation. Recognize when such lines have predictive value and when they may not. Understand how the square of a correlation coefficient is, relation, is related to the quality of fit. And qualitatively understand the use of multiple regression. We're not going to talk about that too much. So uh, the best fit line or the regression line uh, is a line that ties uh, to the data as close as possible than any other possible line. So in other words, um, it's sort of a mathematical line that uh, is, it, it lies closer to the data points than any other line you could draw. This is a, a mathematical thing. We're not going to get into how to create a, a line of best fit, just know that some mathematician, some statistician has a, a formula that they use to get that best fit and closeness to the other points. So a um, few things we want to keep in mind when making these predictions. Uh, don't expect a best fit line to be a good prediction unless the correlation is strong and there are many, many data points. If the sample points lie very close to the best fit line, the correlation is very strong, then the prediction is going to be uh, more accurate, most likely. Um, if the sample points lie away from the best fit line by a substantial amount, the correlation is weak and the predictions tend to be less accurate. And then don't use best fit lines to make predictions beyond the boundaries of the data points to which the line was fit. In other words, um, Best fit lines are best if you're making predictions about points that lie uh, within the upper and lower boundaries of the existing data points. A lot of people want to use, okay, so we've got data from 1980 to 2020, and there's this really good best fit line, and we're going to try to make predictions about 2021. There's no guarantee that we're going to get an accurate prediction. However, if we're talking about uh, GPA and hours of TV watched and you've got, you know, thousands of students and then you've got a new student and they watch uh, five hours of TV and you're, you've got existing data on what a GPA for somebody who watches five hours of TV, that might be a more appropriate use of a best fit line. But using them to predict events in the future, not so much. Okay, uh, three, uh, best fit line on past data is not necessarily valid through now and may not result in a valid predictions of the future. I kind of said that in the last slide. Um, don't make predictions about a population that's different from the population from which the sample data were drawn. So right now, um, I'm at home uh, because of COVID-19 and uh, keep reading these articles about when the peak is going to be and when we're going to be able to come out and how long it's going to last. But remember, all of these predictions, um, the, the models are typically based on what we observed in China of last year. Um, that's a different culture, different laws, different people, different country. I'm not as confident about that model than if we were to, say, take a look at data from places uh, similar to communities like mine where this has already passed. Unfortunately, right now, no such community exists. So I'm not as confident about predictions based on another country with different laws and a different culture. And then finally, remember that best fit line is meaningless when there's no significant correlation or when the relationship is nonlinear. Best fit lines only work with linear data. They do not work with other nonlinear correlations. And um, outliers, remember, can, can, can play a huge uh, role. Gaps in data, uh, we saw those as well. Um, if we have uh, you know, two different categories on the same axis, we saw that with um, the educational versus the uh, regular TV, those are all variables that can impact the correlation. So we want strong, significant correlation for a best fit line to be most effective. 
So uh, let's talk about best fit lines and R squared. The square of your correlation coefficient, your R squared, is the proportion of variation in a variable that is accounted for by the best fit line. There's that that might seem a little confusing, but but basically um, the R squared value lets you know how much um, of the uh, and remember, variation just means difference. So the difference in a variable that's accounted for by the best fit line. In other words, R squared is sort of a measure of how good is this best fit line. Does this best fit line really, really capture what's going on in the data? Okay, so um, here is a table that we have seen before. Uh, this is the um, table of the, uh, the diamond and the different correlations you can uh, make with price and weight and depth and table and color and clarity. So this table reminds us that we can have many different variables and we can talk about price of a diamond with one variable and we notice that price and weight there was a, a decent um, correlation but um, price and color we noticed that there wasn't really a good. Well, if we could take all of those variables into account at once, we get what's on the next slide, which is a multiple regression. And a multiple regression allows us to calculate a best fit equation that um, fits between one variable, such as remember price, and two or more variables, such as weight and color. And um, multiple regression kind of allows us to predict price based on more than one variable. And that's very useful for us because we might want to know, okay, well, the weight's great, but I also have got a weight of this and a color of this or whatever. And then that R squared value tells us a portion of the scatter and the data accounted for by the best fit equation. So we're not going to do anything mathematically with multiple regression. Just know that it exists and that a lot of times we want to know uh, how multiple variables can influence um, a, a single variable. So for example, how can weight and color predict the price. So that's all for this section. If you have any questions, as always, let me know. Hope wherever you are, you're doing okay.